Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and in this video we're going to take a quick look at the rudder. What it does and how to use it. Rudder is attached to the vertical stabilizer and it helps control the yaw of the airplane. So let's take a closer look. So let's start with a review of the yaw of the airplane. The yaw is created when we step on the rudder and we rotate around the vertical axis. So the wings would stay, well, sort of level, but the nose of the airplane is going to go to the right or to the left, depending on which rudder pedal we step on. And we use these pedals to help us stay in coordinated flight. So what exactly is coordinated flight? Let's take a look at that. Now just imagine that this is a road. These are the lines on a road and this is our car. The car is driving straight along the road. It's lined up perfectly with it. The front of the car naturally is lined up with the back of the car. And as it moves along, everything's fine. So we could say the car is being driven coordinated. So now imagine that the road here is relative wind, the wind we are flying into. And imagine now this is an airplane. So if we are flying perfectly straight into the, our relative wind, we are in coordinated flight. So now imagine that our airplane has the side of the airplane going into the relative wind. This would be uncoordinated flight and we would use the rudder to correct that by bringing the nose of the tail back into our relative wind. And we do that with the rudder pedals. So that's an oversimplified explanation of yaw and coordinated flight. So we're going to get in the airplane and I'm going to give you some examples of how to use the rudder. We'll do that in landing and also in a coordinated and uncoordinated turn. So let's get up in the airplane. All right, in this scenario, we have no winds. We're coming straight into runway 33. So this is a really pretty simple landing. I won't have to use the rudders hardly at all. So let's just demonstrate this. I'm sorry I don't have any way to indicate the rudder position. I'll just let you know when I use any rudder at all. So here we go. All right, bouncing around a bit, sorry about that. We're going to full flaps. And I have the throttle pulled all the way back and we're just coasting now. We're going to make the runaway I think with no problem and I'm just making very slight movements with the yoke. So I really haven't had to do much of anything. Now I'm just going to pull back on the yoke here for a nice rollout and just bring it down nice and soft and bring the nose down. That was really pretty simple. No effort at all. So now we're going to try it with a pretty good crosswind. And so you can just see how much more work is required. All right, we're on the same approach, runway 33. But notice the airplane is pointed out to the left. We are crabbing into the runway. The airplane is flying towards the runway. Actually, we're being pushed a little bit to the right of the runway. So we may have to even turn a little farther to the right to crab out there to maintain alignment with the runway. Now, I'm not going to use the rudder pedals here until I have to. Now, there are two trains of thought here when landing like this. Some people like to just, at this point right here, use the rudder get the airplane lined up with the runway and then lower that left wing a bit to so you don't get blown off the runway and then there's this way to do it where you just stay crabbed out to the left and then you use the rudders before touchdown to straighten it out so i'm just going to do it that way i'm just going to keep the nose pointed out to the left i'll have to drop that left wing a little bit so we don't get blown when i straighten it out so let's take a look at that all right, here we go. I'm staying crabbed out to the, to the left. 
and moving back I've got to line up with the runway and now I'm gonna have to keep the nose of the airplane off to the left a little bit you can see the windsock here showing the wind I'm still crabbed I'm still crabbing so I got to make more adjustments with the yoke and with the rudder pedals which I haven't used yet by the way all right I'm gonna make the runway I'm gonna kill the power put that left wing down just a little bit and use the rudder to line it up use the rudder to line it up and keep that left wing down pull that nose up and set it down so there I was required to use right rudder to get the airplane lined up and I also had to drop that left wing down just a bit because when I lined the fuselage and everything up with the runway if I didn't lower that wing that wind would still blow me over so it's a combination of dropping that left wing a bit into the wind and then using the rudder to line the airplane up with the runway so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the other way also so let's take a look at lining up the fuselage with the runway way out there like we did before instead of doing that crabbing at the last minute all right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna straighten up out here a ways before I get to the runway so let me just go to full flaps here and now I'm gonna start using that rudder to move the nose over and now I got to drop that wing down. This is actually harder. I don't know why people do this because there's a lot of coordination here I don't want to have to deal with. Uh, I don't even know if I can do this. So let's just see what happens. I've got uh, quite a bit of right rudder in there to get it lined up. I'm still keeping that wing down as you can tell. I'm not liking this at all to be honest with you. So I really, I've really got that wing lowered. I really have a lot of right rudder. I'm actually letting back off on the rudder now, keeping that wing down. Let's see if I can do this. I'm going to land on one wheel, which is perfectly normal. Uh, I don't really like that. So I suggest you practice this. Uh, pick one of these styles you like. If you like lining up way out there, a mile or so out, and trying to coordinate everything, go right ahead. Or wait till the last minute to straighten things up before you touch down. I find that a whole lot easier. But I would suggest doing them both just to get a feel for it and get used to operating that rudder so you can get a feel for how things work. To set this up, go into Flight Configuration. Click on Weather and Customize, add a wind layer, and here you can determine the direction of the wind, and here you can determine the speed. So set up yourself a nice crosswind, bring it down here to your altitude, of course, and set up a nice crosswind. So if your runway is on 3-3, I had it on 275, I think was the wind direction I had, gave myself a nice crosswind. So you can set yourself up certain scenarios so you can practice using your rudder and other controllers under certain wind conditions. All right, so here we are in coordinated flight. Looking at the turn coordinator, you can see that the ball is right in the center there. This means that the fuselage is lined up perfectly with our relative wind. So now when I make a left turn, watch the ball it's going to move out of there in fact let's take a look from the outside so you can see what's actually happening all right so now we're in perfect coordinated flight i'm going to make a left turn as i turn the ball moves to the left now the rule of thumb here is step on the ball the ball moved to the left i'm going to use the left rudder to bring that ball back and make the airplane return to coordinated flight. Now watch the tail of the uh, airplane here as I step on this left rudder. It is going to move. See how that moves to the right? Now we are in coordinated flight. We are flying directly into our relative wind again. So that correction, as you can see, was to move the tail of the airplane 
or the nose in the other direction, but it's easier to see here, uh, to line the airplane up. Now, if we come back to straight and level, I'm going to let off on that uh, rudder pedal now. And now we're just right back to coordinated flight. If I make a right turn, the ball is going to move to the right again. Okay, so the ball is moving. We are in uncoordinated flight. So I add right rudder to bring that ball back. Notice how the tail of the airplane moves to the left and the nose to the right to get us into coordinated flight. So let's go back to coordinated flight, straight and level. I've released the rudder pedal pressure now. So now we're in coordinated flight with no rudder pressure applied. And that's how you make a coordinated turn. Notice that the tail of the airplane will move to the left when you're making a right turn, and it'll turn to the right when you're making a left turn. The idea is to keep the little ball in the middle here. You want it between your two vertical lines here. That's coordinated flight. When we were in uncoordinated flight, the side of the airplane was moved into the relative wind. This adds drag. So we always want to be in coordinated flight unless you find yourself in a situation where you need to be in uncoordinated flight. We call this dirting up the airplane maybe to drop altitude a little faster, slow down a little quicker, or other situations like that. But normally you're going to be in coordinated flight. All right, so that's it for my little discussion about the rudder and what it is used for. Remember that when you are in normal flight, like we are here, and we are just flying from point A to point B, you won't need to use your rudders. You'll be in coordinated flight pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time. You're going to use your rudders when you make a coordinated turn. Anytime you turn, you're going to put the side of the airplane into the relative wind, and you'll need to make a correction with the rudders. When landing, you'll use the rudder pedals to help line up the airplane, the fuselage, with the runway, as you saw when we had that crosswind. Unfortunately, in the simulator, we need to use the little ball here to see when we are not in coordinated flight. However, in real life, a pilot can feel that change he'll know or she'll know when they're not in coordinated flight. And you can see this if you go to chapter 16 in the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, you can come down here and it'll show you the effects that you will feel. So here we are in coordinated flight. In level flight, we'll feel our body weight being pulled straight down by gravity. In a coordinated turn, we still feel our body weight being pushed into the seat of the airplane. And on pullout too, we'll notice that we'll still have that pull that just feels like we're being pushed into our seat. So when we are in uncoordinated flight, we can feel like we're skidding sideways or slipping forward. This is what uncoordinated flight will feel like. And a pilot will know that. So a pilot won't have to stare at the turn coordinator to know when he or she is not in coordinated turn. After a while, you learn to feel that. You may have heard the expression from a long time ago, flying by the seat of your pants. Well, that's basically what this is when you uh, feel when you are in coordinated and uncoordinated flight or in coordinated turns. So to read more about this, I suggest you go to www.faa.gov and go to the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge and click on Chapter 16 and read up on this. This is a wonderful resource here, faa.gov. And if you haven't downloaded the Pilot Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, now would be a really good time to do it. So that's it for my video on the rudder and how to use it. I thank you so much for watching. If you liked this, please click the like button. If you would like to leave a comment or send me a message, that would be great. I reply to every comment I get. So thank you again for watching and God bless.